My name is Mary Wairimo, aka Nish. I'm a bike mechanic. Growing up, I liked repairing things with my dad, opening up stuff with my dad, cars. So it more came to be more of a passion. My dad did part mechanics, so that's why I used to do it with him. My brother took full mechanics also. It came when you're choosing subjects. Nothing was pleasing, so I just am um, let me try the mechanics. And it worked out well. Okay, in high school, I didn't have this choice. I wanted to become a DJ. But as you know, the parents were Kitambo. That wasn't an option. So after school, I decided to take some time off, did some off jobs. Then, Kafika point, I said, no, I need to do the mechanics uh, seriously. I went to college, but I didn't finish. We were two of us in a class of 17 boys. It was pretty tough, because you have to keep up with the men, but you earn your respect. They, you have some level of respect, because even around the school, people don't believe you're a girl doing mechanics engineering. This is the tank. This is where the computer is. This is the clock. These are the headlights. This is the brake lever, the handlebar. This is the brake fluid. And then this is the clutch lever. Then these are the shock absorbers, and this is where you adjust them. This is the engine cover. Also, this is where we put the crash bobbin. Also, when the bike falls, it helps protect the fairings. Fairings are the covers for which we put on the bikes, which makes the bike look good. At first, I started making cars. Then I said, let me venture sideways into bikes. I see how it turns out. It turned out very well. So slowly repairing bikes, then turned out into riding bikes, then now racing bikes. For bike repairing, I think it's much easier than car repairing. It's lighter. I can say the income is good. Plus you get to deal with many types of bikes, different types, different sizes, different capacities, which is fun for me. This is a Suzuki Jixa. It is a 600cc. It is more of an old bike. We are trying to do some technical work on it and also customizing it to become an open bike. I, uh, this one is a, a 600 CBR. We are working on the paintwork. It has some bit of paintwork being done on. It's a more of a kind of new model. This is a UM, an X Street. It has some engine work that has to be done on. At first, people were like, you don't believe you can do it. Then I was so nervous, I didn't know people. You have, you're just all quiet, you're working on the bike. After you finish working on the bike, the results are good, the customers, they were so impressed. Raising the bar to reach where men are and to pass them, because you don't want to be on the same level, you want to be better than them. That's the main challenge. And also being looked down upon by some of the men who don't believe, of which you don't really have to do it for them to believe in you, because it's your life. But we just do it for you. When I'm not in business, maybe mostly I'm home resting, riding a bike or even racing, I'm just chill. There is nothing as satisfying as when you go to sleep and know you've done something, something worth it, mostly in your life. And if you sit there and start thinking, oh, a man is going to degrade me, a man is going, you're never going to raise up as women. That's why you have to empower each other. She came being brilliant. In fact, I was laughing about it. Uh, I was telling her. She came in. Uh, it's the first time I was meeting her. So we told her the first rule is uh, you have to cut your nails. We were just testing and seeing, is she ready for it, yeah. yeah. She started biting the nails and we were like, okay, she looks serious. Yeah, so we gave her the job. She's part of the crew. As they always say, the customer is right. You know, you can't argue with the customer. So you have to do what they say. And for us, sometimes it becomes a, a little bit of a problem. But in the end, it all works out. 
the biggest issue is like when I send her for an outside job. Let's say someone is stuck somewhere and uh, I'm like, yeah, you need a rescue? I'm sending someone. So when she appears, she's like, okay, you're the one who's been sent. That's the first thing I ask. For now, it's basically learning skills, getting skills from here and there. When you reach a certain level, put all the skills, put them together, share with others. I mostly have trained women on riding bikes and I'm always happy when we go on rides with them. It's so satisfying, you feel you've accomplished something, making the crew grow. We're going to remove the plugs. Plugs help in the bike to combust air in the engine. So if not, the, it causes backfire. Backfire or other problems that other people would understand. So the easier one, I'll show you. So this is the air box that you get before you reach to the engine itself. We have to remove it. So you take the plug spanner, then you have to remove the, this. So this is the plug itself from the engine. When I want to diagnose a bike, the customer has felt the problem in the bike. So comes, explains, maybe the front disc, it's not working, the front brakes are not working. Uh, so with my experience, it clicks. Maybe the brake parts are over, maybe we need to add more brake fluid. So it's more of a skill. When the owner doesn't know, we personally take the bike for a test ride. Then during the test ride, you can feel the problem. Then you come check now if it's really the problem. If not, now we check the whole bike. This is the front shock. This is the sprocket. But as you can see, this and this, these are both sprockets, but this is for a bigger bike. This is for a smaller bike. This is where the chain functions with the chain. This is the clutch cable. Small bikes use this cable. Some of the bikes use cable, but mostly with the new technology, you find the new bikes mostly, they use the hydraulic cable, the hydraulic clutch. It's a field that needs dedication, a lot of time. Yes, a lot of time, because it's involving. It's involving, it's hurting, it's expensive, because uh, you need to come to work every single day. You need to be prepared to get calls to weird hours. I'm stuck here, oh, come help me. You're just chilling, in the, eating, and someone calls you. You, because you're basically entering the service industry, and people rely on you at all times. I would like to encourage more women to get into this line of work. Personally, for me, it's fun. It's very fun and it's satisfying. Maybe to others it will be their income, but to me it's fun. It's cool seeing women working, doing the hard jobs. Since I started this venture, I've grown mentally. I've met people. Opportunities are out there. Business has grown. It's a win for me. I would like to advise young women, never be afraid. Never live on the basis that you're thinking. You're afraid of what other people think about you. It's your life by the end of the day. Nobody is going to come out there, come and tell you, oh, brought you supper. Out of nowhere when you're seated in the house. It's for you to take that stand. Also, you build a name for yourself. You gain the respect. I'm still gaining the skills. But for now, I'm thinking of venturing into cars a bit to gain the skill, the full skill, because that's what I went to school to learn. But still, I'll be on bikes. As for interaction, with people, when you tell them, oh, I'm a mechanic, at first they're like, whoa, that's cool. Then sometimes you find other people, they're afraid of you, because you intimidate them. Men don't like being intimidated. That's their problem, Sasa. You find others are afraid of you, others are so happy being 
in contact with you. It's different, different reactions with different people. I would like to let women know working in this, or uh, training in these sections, in these categories, or these technical areas. Don't try to fit in, try to stand out. When you stand out, it's, it's just easy for you. Jobs you get easy, respect is there, everything goes smooth. Don't try to fit in, just stand out. I'm Pagori Nganga. I'm a mechanic by profession. Yeah, so I've been doing this since 2008 when I first initially got into DTW training school. Uh, after which I trained for two years, then after that worked for a while. And from there it's been just, then to another garage, and then finally here I am, doing my own thing. Actually my first encounter with, with, with motor vehicles or anything mechanical was when I was around 10. My dad is a bike fanatic, so it was during that time that I actually first learned like I first, first had an encounter with a spark plug. On top of him being a bike fanatic, he was also, he's also an electrician. So it was just a combination of all that that I found myself in this. So yeah, motorbikes. So when I first started repairing motorbikes with him, and then we'd, sometimes you'd find me in Metwandisha, you know, TVs. And you realize the time he just came and everything was just apart. And I didn't know how to get it back on. You know, you know when you're pulling something apart, you must have an idea of how to get it back up. But I had no idea. All I knew is I had seen it being done, and I was doing it. Funny enough, when I, at the same time when I was around 10, I knew I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I had just been bought gifted hands. So you know, Ben Carson influence, Nini, you want to... <laughs> You want, you want to do neurosurgery, yeah, mm. and that stuck with me, that, that really stuck with me. I went to Karonga Primary School, but I later transferred and I did my KCP at Hidungori Township. After that I went to St. Anne's, Yoki. Yeah, and all through I knew I wanted to be a doctor. And then, okay, in high school, I did <laughs> I didn't quite do that well. First things first, uh, I missed my form three years because I was really sick. I had to be. Um, and then, so I missed my form three year and part of form four. And during my KCSC, I, I managed a B. At that time, a B was not going to campus. A B has started going to campus just the other day. I remember I I was just home after 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 the results and. Uh, I had I started doing driving school, and then I've done, of course, the computer courses, you know, the usual. So I knew medicine was out of the question at this point in time. I was not going back to school. Then a friend of mine comes with a newspaper cutoff. I remember, I'll never forget this title. I, I drew the sharpest tool in the box. And then the, the qualifications, for us to go, I mean, for the DTW training school. Ah, I'm like, okay, this is it, like, this is it, like, this is it. And so we applied with my friend, he's done. Uh, we applied, I went through the first interview, unfortunately my friend didn't, but he went on to become a very great lawyer. There was a series of six interviews, some were even online, um, and meeting with several panelists, so six interviews later, I got it. I had awesome classmates. Like there was no, you're a dude, you're a woman, you're a man, no, there was no that. It was about getting through the first month because this, this is what happened during the first month. We were doing something called basic engineering skills. So we do welding. We do things like welding, fabrication, we use the grinder, we do arc welding, gas welding, it was crazy, like, because first things before you get used to the smoke, much as you have the protective gears, we didn't, for some, some nights we didn't sleep, because you kind of, I don't know what was happening, I don't know if it's the gas or, 
I, I don't know what was happening. We had sleepless nights. Then our eyes were like just full of sand. You will feel like someone just has taken sand and poured it to your eyes, yeah? We're even getting blisters. Even with the gloves, you're getting blisters because again, this is something you've never done before. Yani, from your very protective cocoon, now you're going like straight into these engineering skills. Eh, well, it was, it was crazy. But I think for me, the moment I was done with that one month, I knew that's it. Like, there is nothing that I'll encounter that will put me down. And I think that is the whole point of us starting with the engineering skills, because it can get worse than things. So at some point, I felt like employment wasn't cut out for employment, because there are, there are some challenges that you encounter as a woman in a male-dominated field and as employed. And um, I think for me, after some of these challenges happening the first time, and then the second time, I think I was just done with employment. I was like, you know what, if I'm going to encounter some of these challenges, it better be on my own terms and my own rules. And so I quit employment. I remember I just bought a diagnosis machine. I went to Kiambu town. Kiambu is home. I was like, I can only start from home. And at that point, no one had a diagnosis machine. Uh, I bought, I had some savings, and then mom topped me up, went, bought the diagnosis machine, went to Kiambu, uh, garages, told them, you know what, I have this machine. Most of the times you have to go to town. Now I have it. I can work on it. In fact, I never introduced myself as anything else, as a mechanic or anything. No, I just had the machine. I knew from there I'd, I'd figure out a way out. Yeah, so in fact, I get called and I'm paid 1,000 bob for just reading the fault codes and explaining and get 1,000 bob. I'm like, hmm, we can do this. We can do this. <laughs> it's during that time now, you like get to face a whole set of challenges. I remember this time, I was like, I had this bag that I used to carry the machine in and I'm heading to, I'm heading to the car. And I can see this guy already shaking his head. His head, And I'm like, okay, what's happening? But then I, that escapes my mind. So I get in the car and I'm like, excuse me, let me, I may I have to look at your car. So after we are done, after we are done, after I'm done checking the car and after telling them what they need to do, and then the mechanic now takes over, the guy comes clean and tells me, you know, I bought you a selling soap. Like I knew, you, I, I thought you were, what, well, you know, I thought you were those guys, those those women that walk around selling socks. So, if you looked at me closely, you could see that I was already shaking my head, like see Leo, <laughs> see Leo, like, they've already like there's already a judgment about, uh, like he's already judged even before you do whatever it is that you need to do, and um, he became a very good client because after that he bought like two or three more cars. And he became my customer for everything, not just now the diagnosis, but everything else. So that's when I started now introducing myself as a mechanic too. Like I just don't diagnose cars, I also fix them. And uh, I can say that from then, it's just been an upward curve. It's what we've been brought up. In. It's the society and the norms that will be brought up in that women cannot do some things. Like our, we are supposed to be in offices. We're supposed to, when at home, we're supposed to be in the kitchen, which I don't even like, you know. Um, so, it, and also our own parents, they, they they push us to do the things that that are normal, you know. Like this is what it, it is, what it is. Like this is the way the system is set up. He cannot work for you in a male-dominated, you know, male-dominated field. But I, I, I thank God for my mom and my dad, who are very supportive. In fact, I remember from my first meeting, and you have a fast phone, so that night I can start coming for training school. My dad bought me a phone, and he also brought me to he, uh, for the first meeting at at Dobi. Like we've been, we've been really supportive. So I'd say the doubt comes from the system that we've we've been brought up in.
Of course, there is the biology bit of it. You know, some of these jobs are not are quite tough for us. Like there are some things I cannot lift on my own, but a guy will comfortably do so. So I, I think biology too, too. But again, when it comes to the vehicle, there are way too many systems for. Like for me, mostly now I do the electrical bit of it, electrical bit of a car. Is for the mechanical bit. They are my guys to do that. The, the job market is changing, and, and that's a given. Nowadays, skills actually pay way better than the... Okay, I'm not dismissing anyone's job. We all need each other. I need that office person because I have to pick that car from an office, you know? <laughs> so we, we all need each other. I'm not disregarding anyone's job, but um, skills are as important, and the thing is, you find that the office jobs are too flooded. You go to you go to a training school, the number of people that are graduating from a certain class, and you go to a campus and um, look at the number of people graduating and they're all and the spaces they are all fighting for and you find that the skill the, 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 the skilled people actually have a way better they are better positioned in there in the in the in the job market. And honestly for self-employment and especially for self-employment i after looking at, at situations and, and at people the those who have a better transition from employment to self-employment are the skilled people the other thing is peace of mind peace of mind for your kids I mean, support them if that is where their heart is because i'm of the impression when you're passionate about something it's it's everything. In fact, I usually say when your work is your passion, it stops becoming work, it becomes play. So it gives me the ultimate happiness. In fact, sometimes I'll leave the house, come and do something in the garage. Not that I'm getting paid for it, but you know, that is where the heart is. So, and this translates into, when you're doing well at work, it kind of translates well into everything else. When your heart is where it, it, it is supposed to be, it translates into peace, peace into all other aspects of your life. It almost gives you a holistic happiness or calmness. It's not been easy. And um, unfortunately, as a woman in a male-dominated field, when they are going at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, you have to go at 200 kilometers per hour. Yeah? You, so you, it's like you're trying to prove your worth, of which, okay, I'll, I'll admit this, at some point I had to stop because I realized I'm playing catch up with, with these people, so I had to create my own rules, you know, stick by them, do what it is that I do best. And one way of shutting them up is just being good at what you do. And the thing is, you don't even have to try hard as long as that is where your heart is, as long as that is your passion. You don't even have to prove anything it just it just it just comes there's something about a woman in this field and I, I'm, I, I'm not ashamed to say this there's a certain trust that people give you when you're doing things like i don't know i cannot i cannot be i cannot be able to explain it and also something else there's space for everyone you know, this is just, we are no longer where every, some things were meant for, and that is why you have now men chefs in a position where they were told, no, you cannot be in the kitchen, but they are there cooking delicious foods and all that. This space for everyone. Follow your passion, whatever it takes you. I won't lie, sometimes when I encountered some challenges, in fact, there's a year, I'm sorry, I never mentioned it before, there's a year I didn't practice this. I didn't touch a car, I didn't do anything because I felt like maybe I'm not supposed to be here. But again, when, you're, when you love something, when you're passionate about something, that is enough drive. That is enough drive for you. And then you have to show up, like you have to show up. Even when you don't feel like it, you just get up and show up.